Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the February 2nd, 2024 meeting of the Passaic County Board of County Commissioners. I make up for our last uh, scheduled Tuesday meeting, which was canceled. Uh, let's begin with the roll call and announcement of the open public meetings law. Lou? County Commissioners Cruz, Here. Duffy, Here. and for the record, uh, please note that Commissioner Duffy is participating telephonically. Uh, Commissioners Gallo, Here. James, Here. Lepore, Here. Deputy Director Lazar, Here. Director Bartlett. Here. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Let me, uh, oh. Sorry. Yes. Uh, the Passaic County Board of Co uh, County Commissioners has agreed to change the date of the regular board meeting, which was originally scheduled and advertised in the annual notice for Tuesday, January 23rd, 2024, to Friday, uh, February 2nd, 2024. Today, Friday, February 2nd, the regular board meeting will commence at 12 noon in the, in the room 220 in the County Commissioner's boardroom. The State County Administration Building 401 Grand Street, Patterson, New Jersey. The Herald News and the record was noticed on Tuesday, January 30th, 2024, that the Passaic County Board of County Commissioners regular board meeting has been changed to today, Friday, February 2nd, 2024, commencing at 12 noon. This satisfies the 48 hour advance notice of the board meeting. A copy of the public notice was also published in the legal ads section of both the Herald News and the record. Thank you, Lou. Um, as we rise, uh, I'm going to take the next couple items a little bit out of order. We are going to start with the pledge, but we're going to follow that with a moment of silence. Um, 2024 so far has been uh, here in Passaic County what Her Majesty the Queen would have called an Annus Horribilis, uh, a terrible, terrible start to 2024 as we began the year losing Councilman Lauren Murphy uh, in the city of Clifton, a longtime public servant of this county at uh, the Board of Social Services and the One Stop, a leader in our Democratic Party and someone who everyone I'm sure has a story uh, of how she helped and made a difference in their lives. And then of course, as we were here waiting to start our meeting last week, we got the terrible news about Sheriff Richard Burdnick. So uh, after the, the uh, Pledge of Allegiance, please remain standing for a moment of silence to remember them as well as all the others that we've lost uh, in the military COVID and otherwise, and then uh, Father Ryan, I would ask you to bring us out of that uh, uh, moment of silence with uh, some words of solace. Uh, Orlando, would you lead us in the pledge? If you join me in placing your hand over your heart and saluting our flag, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Creator God, with you there is no darkness. Your character has no shadows, and you are pure and good. Yet in our broken world, we see so much darkness around us. Bring your light and restoring presence to the dark places in our lives. Bring your hope to hearts that feel defeated. Bring your love and compassion to those in pain. Give us faith to say with the psalmist, Lord, your light is my lamp. My God illuminates my darkness. Show us glimpses of your presence with us and the comfort you can bring. You are trustworthy good and true, and we thank you for caring for us so deeply and beautifully. Open our eyes to see you at work today. Give us your life. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Father. 
returning to the agenda, may I have a motion to approve the minutes of December 28, 2023? Move it. Second. County Commissioners Cruz? Yes. Duffy? Yes. Gallo? Yes. James? Yes. Lapore? Yes. Deputy Director Lazara? Yes. Director Bartlett? Yes. And may I have a motion to approve the minutes of January 3rd, 2024? Second. County Commissioners Cruz? Yes. Duffy? Yes. Gallo? Yes. James? Lapore? Yes. Deputy Director Lazare? Yes. Director Bartlett? Yes. May I have a motion for approval of the proclamation? No. Second. Um, Cruz? And seconded by uh, Lapore? Gallo. Okay. County Commissioners Cruz? Yes. Duffy? Yes. Gallo? Yes. James? Yes. Lapore? Yes. Deputy Director Lazara? Yes. Director Bartlett? Yes. Well, that brings us to letter H, our administrator's report. Matthew? Uh, thank you, Director. First, I'm going to call up uh, Dr. Gungill, our, our health officer, and uh, Ari Silly Pintel, our assistant health officer, to um, uh, present on the state of health in the county of Passaics. Come on up, Dr. Gungel. Thank you. Bear in mind that the information that we provide is based on uh, programs that we provide throughout the county. There are a couple of programs like that, and the others are specifically for the municipalities that we cover. So it's a, almost a twofold type of report. Um, I just want to acknowledge in the room are my division leads, um, and so if you have any particular question, uh, for their programs, they'll be happy to answer your questions. Okay. Um, as you know, we have several divisions in the health department, and this slide shows those divisions. Uh, mosquito, environmental, emergency preparedness, communicable disease and nursing, health promotion and wellness. And this is a 2023 report, but for 2024, we are also going to have weights and measures. So for next year, You'll have uh, a report from Weights and Measures as well. All right, the first division I'm mentioning is the Mosquito Control Division. And um, this is the slide that uh, speaks to what they, have, uh, they had done for 2023. Um, there were 26 West Nile virus mosquito pools. That means when they went testing they, in 26 different areas in the county, they found uh, West Nile virus. Uh, there were two cases of West Nile virus in Passaic County, um, but happily no one um, lost their lives for it. Um, our requests for services were down last year. Um, we're not sure why. Perhaps, you know, the work was done so well that nobody complained, um, because I think the previous time uh, it was over 400 requests for services. Um, Another important point I'd like to share is the uh, 15,000 uh, uh, fish that were stocked in our streams um, and pools so that uh, uh, they could eat the uh, mosquito larvae if necessary. And public uh, ed education events that our, our superintendent and um, entomologists may have uh, had in the community. The Division of Environmental Health is a pretty large division, and um, they completed over 700 site visits, and that is uh, planned inspections that they did, and then complaints that they would get from DEP or residents. Um, some of the issues that they addressed were odor, noise, um, solid waste, hazmat incidents, so you know the 
uh, jackknife tractor trailers and our response uh, to the oil or whatever that is spilled. Uh, these pictures here represent some of the places that our, our team responded to and um, in, in the course of their work. Uh, we don't do the work by ourselves. Uh, we work with the state, the feds, if necessary, to, um, to get to protect the health and well-being of our residents. Yes. Um, Paul? Yeah, uh, the top one was a uh, car carrier went on fire on Route 80, right where it goes over uh, the display trailer by the Silverboro Olympic Park Square. Uh, the bottom one is, uh, that was a joint exercise with the other counties in the Uasi region at the Meadowlands where they were uh, simulating a, uh, some sort of bomb threat in the old there in the AMG wise. So that's just uh, the, the multi agency, um, interagency working uh, mutual aid type stuff. So if you know we were able to bring all those assets from the different municipalities and counties and uh, use them as one. Um, and then uh, the far right is a, uh, a water inspection field that's just showing the infrastructure of uh, where the well is coming into. So as I mentioned about the collaboration, <clears throat> and Paul mentioned UASI. Uh, for those who don't know, UASI stands for Urban Area Strategic Initiative. And we have, and it comprises of seven counties, the ones that um, are just outside New York City and two large cities. And the large cities are Jersey City and, um, and Newark. I mean, Jersey City, yes, and Newark. Um, and so not only do we collaborate with them for hazmat events and exercises, but we also do a lot of emergency preparedness exercises with that team as well. And Araceli actually serves on the board um, for the public health team. Uh, the Right to Know program is also part of Environmental, and um, that's, the, that's the program that goes into businesses and also trains county employees regarding the right to know what kind of chemicals they're exposed to in the community. And this just shows the, some of the, the radon test kit program that we distribute to residents and our requests regarding, uh, I guess, OPRA requests regarding files, et cetera, that we, um, that we do. The Office of Consumer Protection is um, a new office as per the new code, uh, but we were actually doing the work already, and that's the team that does the inspections of restaurants and pools and so forth. And uh, this file shows, um, this slide shows some of the inspections that they completed for 2023. Um, I actually like the graphic there. The graphic shows where uh, it's dangerous to hold the food, that, you know, the temperature that's dangerous for food, um, which is one of the ways that they conduct their inspections. Um, back in the old days, the inspections were what we call floors, walls, and ceilings. Um, now it's, it's more science-based and it's time and temperature controlled because that's how bacteria grows depending on the temperature. So this just speaks to what they have uh, done. And we have a team of uh, six inspectors now under this. These are the ones that also go, <clears throat> excuse me, into our uh, contracted municipalities to conduct the inspections. Uh, this slide again is from the same team. Um, we trained several staff to uh, provide um, uh, food managers and food handler certifications. So <clears throat> there's a requirement for all the food establishments to have people who are trained in food management and food handling. And uh, what they normally do is they would find a provider and um, take the classes from them and provide a certificate to us. Uh, we decided that we wanted to have people on our team who are certified to teach and certified to proctor the exam. So we had three people trained last year to do that. That's just some highlights of what's happening. Um, the third bullet is really interesting because uh, this is with one of our partners, West Milford, which is almost you know all septics. And so um, there was a big program that they had there 
and our team really helped to, to manage the, uh, the septic pumping uh, program in West Milford. Um, and that really prepares us for other locations where there is a high percentage of, um, <coughs> of septics. This next slide has Office of Solid Waste and Recycling. And this is the department that provides us with the collection events uh, throughout the year where we're able to dispose of either uh, documents that we want to share, uh, shred, uh, computer electronics, hazardous uh, materials, um, just to name a few. And for 2023, our environmental health educator uh, went around Pasay County schools, camps, and recreation uh, programs and really spoke with children from pre-K up to fifth grade about the importance of recycling, um, help them build those skills on how to recycle properly throughout Pasay County, and they were able to conduct a, a total of 222, 25 programs and reach a total of 3,502 students in Pasay County. Also for 2023, uh, the office worked with uh, Clifton, City of Clifton, and created a shared services agreement so we could begin to have a program known as the Polycyrene Foam Recycling Program. Um, so for this specific program, their, their equipment or our equipment is installed in the City of Clifton DPW building. And we have provided City of Clifton with collection bins, as you can see in, in the image in the slide. And these are basically the bins where the residents of the City of Clifton currently will be able to uh, drop off any foam packaging waste. And hopefully in the springtime of 2024, we will be able to expand this into our other municipalities as well. So for early 2024, we're looking into purchasing additional uh, collection bins and hopefully create additional shared services uh, agreements uh, so our municipalities can work with Clifton and in collecting this and reducing uh, the waste that comes from packaged products. How big? Um, Nina would have that information. <laughs> The collection bins. Are you giving to yourself? So, um, basically, basically, three very large, sort of like the industrial size, uh, hefty type, type bags, like the 50 gallon, they can hold three of those in one of those bins. Uh, some of the municipalities are looking to actually get some roll off containers because they're anticipating a lot more than just, you know, what could fit in those bins. However, if the bins overflow, the municipalities can simply just bring the material to Clifton on a more frequent basis. It would really be up to them. At this point, we're expecting them just to bring it whenever it's full. And I guess they're going to kind of assess how long it takes to fill a bin. not going to be a curbside material. What it's going to be is it's going to be a drop-off item for the municipality, for the, um, for the residents. They'll bring it to their drop-off center. And then the municipality will bring it on an as-needed basis to Clifton, where it will be processed there. Oh, that's not on the City Hall property, though, right? No, it's at the DPW on East 7th Street. We just had a meeting on in December, actually, with all the towns. They got to see a demonstration. It's been up and running for about two months. And um, the municipal recycling coordinators were very excited to be jumping onto this. And so some of them have actually started looking for getting roll-off containers, as I say, as opposed to just the smaller bins, thinking that they're going to be having a, quite, a, quite a need for it. People are really interested in, in getting rid of that packaging waste. In addition, with the Office of Solid Waste and Recycling, 
Um, we distributed over 6,000 reusable tote bags um, due to the single-use plastic bag legislation that um, was adopted on May 2022. So in order for us to assist our residents and so they could help us with this legislation, we provided those tote bags um, in our different municipalities in Passaic County. Also, with our recycle, recycle Coach application, um, this is the application that we can download into our phones and get information regarding curbside collection uh, in the municipality, individualized municipality, and also um, so we could make people aware of the collection events that are occurring in Passaic County. Yes. Yes. Yes, correct. That's the application. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the application previously provided us with on, only English and Spanish. In 2023, we made sure to add Arabic language as well. And um, we had a total of 27 recycling collection programs for 2023. This next slide is our emergency preparedness um, division. So we do e emergency preparedness at the Department of Health Services. And we work with our MRCs who are our medical reserve corps. Um, they assisted us all through the COVID-19 pandemic and they continue to assist us with any on-site, off-site clinics that we may have or just any events that are occurring, drills. Um, and we also, provide them with trainings. So for 2023, we provided them with CPR training, summer safety, ready senior workshops, and also active shooter uh, event that took place on August 2023. So we keep them engaged and active and just continue to provide these trainings so they could develop additional skills or just you know keep them sharp for a next emergency that we may face. <coughs> So to speak about the health department, um, this is about the medical reserve corps. And our goal is to have all of them trained in CPR and first aid. Regarding the county, I think that decision will have to come from this body to inform us on how you would like us to proceed. But um, the sheriff's department and other departments have the, uh, the bandwidth and the trained personnel to do the training. This particular report is about the people who helped us at William Patterson and other places and what we provide for them. And regarding goals for that, those goals are set by the state. And actually, it comes from the feds. Um, and then the state will give us a, a work program and tell us, these are the areas we want you to concentrate on this year. And so this was one of them. Just to demonstrate how, you know, emergency preparedness is an important um, task in the health department. Early 2023, because things were calming down with COVID, we decided to do an inventory drill where staff and MRCs went into the warehouse and we really went through each single piece of supply, equipment, just to see what we currently have. And then if we need to order additional um equipment or supplies to get that done. So w this is the image that you see up here, our, our staff and the MRC volunteers assisting us with that project. One last thing about the MRCs. Um, uh, at the beginning of COVID, um, we were able to distribute uh, uh, masks and gloves to all of the health departments even to the hospitals because we had them in our warehouse. So we provide a lot of other services that we can't obviously bring to this table. All right, so the next division is communicable disease and nursing. And um, so that's the epidemiologists and the nurses. And you've seen all of them out on the road and the programs that they do. Uh, this slide speaks about the you know various pieces of data that 
um, our epidemiologists put together for us. But I also wanted to bring to your attention in 2023, 49 residents of Passaic County died from COVID. Um, and that's, that's huge and that's important to know. In January of 2024, we have already lost eight residents of Passaic County to COVID. So COVID might be you know, uh, prevalent and it's endemic, but you know, we are still losing people to COVID. So we really must be mindful of that going forward. So this slide speaks to all the different things that they do. In, in addition to COVID, obviously, they do other diseases, um, and the numbers represent the municipalities that we cover. Uh, 18, 18 outbreaks were managed, and, and they're usually in long-term care facilities, uh, daycares, uh, schools, and our epidemiologists are the lead uh, in managing those. They work with the school nurses, they work with, with the ICPs, whether it's hospital, whether it is long-term care facilities. ICP stands for Infection Control Personnel. Yes. Yeah. So the, the number of residents who have died from COVID that we can even see in our agenda of 285, is that updated, reflected through the data? The one that's 2000, no, 2000, yes. That's the, from the entire, from the beginning of the COVID to now. Actually, today the number went up a little bit, so it's 2289. You're welcome. Okay. Um, new for 2023 was the health clinic uh, in Totowa, the Well Child Clinic. We got approval from the state and from the feds. And so we have these vaccine for children program, adult vaccine programs, and they've been very active and more so with the immigrant situation that we, that we have. Uh, we have three locations, Totowa, Wanakew, and West Milford. We also do lead screenings, glucose screenings, and you know the screenings that you're all familiar with that we do. Uh, the eye screening continues, and for 2024, uh, we just discussed with uh, the Commission for the Blind to expand the program. So we're actually going to have two, uh, two clinics per month. They're both going to be at the Totowa, Totowa location. Yes. Not right now, but we're going to start again soon. Yeah. Health promotion and wellness. Uh, so in our department, we continue to provide different type of programs throughout Passaic County on everything you could see listed here. So childhood lead poisoning prevention, um, chronic disease, just um, if it's something that we're able to provide, we make sure to provide it to our, um, to our towns. Um, so for 2023, we did a total of 93 programs and reached uh, 3,100 uh, residents in Passaic County with this information. Um, also, we were working on um, events, so we had our women's health extravaganza and our men's health extravaganzas, and we promoted this information so we can provide our community residents with free health services as it's something that is necessary and hopefully will lead to better health in the long run. Um, so women's health extravaganza, we were able to reach 62 women in Passaic County. For the men's health extravaganza, we reached 49. And then for our family wellness event, we reached a total of 20 families in Passaic County. And this slide here is um, information regarding our overdose fatality review team. Um, this is a program that is run, um, funded by CDC and run by the Department of Health. Um, we have our OFRT coordinator, and our coordinator meets with um, different agencies in, in the county and in the state. So our medical examiner um, with our sheriff's department, our prosecutor's uh, office, and just any agency that deals with overdose and opioids, um, they meet on a bi-monthly basis. They receive uh, cases from the medical examiner and they go over these decedent cases and they really just discuss what happened with these particular cases. 
um, what was the gap between, uh, um, you know, hospital and a treatment center, and they really just try to identify any gaps, identify preventable risk factors, and at the end, recommend um, potential efforts that are gonna help the state of New Jersey. So they do this on a bi-monthly basis, and um, not to brag, but <laughs> for 2023, early 2023, um, the State Department of Health was looking for two exemplary uh, agencies, OFRT agencies, so they could present to the CDC what we're doing at the state. Um, Ocean County was the original OFRT in the state, and then it expanded to other counties in the state. And um, the other agency was Passaic County, and they were very impressed with what we've been doing with our forum, the No More Dead Ends on the Road to Recovery Forum. Um, so we just detailed what our OFRT uh, program was doing in Passaic County and the success of the forum. Um, so the forum that we held for 2023 took place in October 27. When we held our first annual uh, forum, we had 86 attendees. This year we had uh, 115 attendees. And obviously for 2024, we're planning to do our third annual forum and we're expecting an increase of attendees as well. All right, so another thing that we began last year was the community health needs assessment, another requirement for, um, for the state. And this one is very uh, detailed and I'm hoping that all of you have done it already. If you haven't, please do it. We're, we're, our goal is to get 5,300 surveys completed it's, it's intense, but we're really trying to capture what residents in Passaic County need because that's going to help us to figure out what programs to provide. Um, the other piece of this that's really uh, exciting is that we're going to use the needs assessment to help us with the Public Health Accreditation Board, which is another program that we started. It's to accredit, to accredit the department to national standards. And the purpose for that is to raise the standard of our services here in Passaic County. Um, not many, I think there are eight now uh, health departments in New Jersey are accredited, one county. Um, and that last year, uh, we, we, um, Passaic County had our first uh, department accredited and that was the city of Clifton. So a big shout out and kudos to Clifton for achieving accreditation. Um, so that's that's next for us. That's that's uh, we've we've started. We've hired somebody who is the main person for that, and it's on its way. All right. So that's the end of the you know the pieces that we wanted to bring to your attention for today, and it's required on the NJSA New Jersey Statutes Annotated for the Health Department. But I grabbed this slide from the last presentation, normal presentation that we did. And that was the slide, that was the last slide from the 2020 presentation I did here. Um, and it was telling about the hot topic of coronavirus. And well, we know the history of that now. So I just wanted to end with that because that's what we knew at that time. And have we come a long way since then? Yes. All right, thanks for listening. We have met our requirement. We could check the, this box off. And uh, if you have any, if you have any questions for us, you know where to find us. And um, thanks for listening, and thanks to the team for being here and answering all the questions. And of course, thanks to you, Araceli. Thank you very much, Doctor. That's uh, as always a reminder of uh, the way your unit saves lives here in Passaic County every day. So appreciate that. Matt, what's next? Yep. Uh, thank you, Doctor Gungill and, and Araceli. Um, Next, we have a public hearing for the county's 2024 grant application to the Green Acres Program for improvements at the Heckman Preserve, one of our facilities in the Passaic County Park System. So I'll turn this over to Lou. I'll read the announcement of the public hearing. This public hearing is being held to solicit the comments from the public regarding the County of Passaic seeking funding through the State of New Jersey Green Acres Program for improvements at Peckman Preserve located at Wilmore Road, locate uh, Little Falls, New Jersey, 07424, nearest intersection at Wilmore Road and Prospect Street. Project scope 
The County of Passaic proposes uh, improvements at Peckman Preserve through the development of a passive recreational area. A concept plan shows the proposed changes and preliminary cost estimates and environmental impact assessment to the project can be found at PassaicCountyNJ.org. Oh, thank you. Uh, forward slash DCHA. The public hearing is being held today, 12 noon, on Friday, February 20, uh, fr Friday, February 2nd, in the in this room, Passaic County Administration Building. The following public hearing was noticed in the Herald News in the record on January 12, 2024. County Commissioners Cruz, yes. Duffy, you still with us? It's a, it's yes. a, it's a here. The, uh, Gallo, yes. James, here. Lapore, here. Deputy Director Lazar, yes. Director Bartlett, uh, here. Uh, can I have a motion to open the public hearing on this Green Acres application? Lapore and James, right? Yep. Okay. <laughs> uh, County Commissioners Cruz, yes. Duffy, you still with us, Duffy? Uh, Gallo, yes. James, yes. Lapore, yes. Deputy Director Lazara, yes. Director Bartlett, yes. So this is not the public portion of a regular meeting. This is specific to this Green, a Green Acres application. Does anyone present desire to be heard on the application? Seeing no one, I'm in Second. Any commissioners? Cruz, yes. Duffy, Gallo, yes. James, Lapore, yes. Deputy Director Lazara, yes. Director Bartlett, yes. Can I have a motion to adjourn that public hearing? I'll move it. Second. County Commissioners Cruz, yes. Duffy, Gallo, yes. James, yes. Lapore, yes. Deputy Director uh, Lazara, yes. Director Bartlett, yes. Can, can I have two seconds just to call him? Sure. While Lewis stepped away, do you want to explain our next uh, public uh, hearing? And then we'll have him, we'll open it when he gets there. Uh, sure. And I'll just note, I think there's a typo in the uh, the agenda, but the next public hearing is held to, um, to solicit comments from the Department of Culture and Historic Affairs desire to establish pre-qualification of bidders for the exterior uh, restoration of the historic Passaic County Courthouse. Um, this is related to our, um, one of the capital ordinances that we're introducing. Um, while we have a moment of downtime, do you, maybe Kelly can come up and explain to us a little bit what this project is? How about that? That'd be great. Putting you on the spot. <laughs> you want to pull up a chair? And turn on the microphone. Okay, thank you. Um, so first, thank you and the administration for uh, moving this project forward um, in many of our historic preservation initiatives over the last six, seven years. Um, and just uh, relaying a comment, we've been speaking with other counties and working on cross-county partnerships, and Passaic County is seen as the model for historic preservation throughout the state. Um, so the courthouse, though, planned starting the construction in 1890s was completed in 1904. Um, it's listed in the uh, Courthouse Historic District, which was locally designated in 2014, with help to uh, Matthew Jordan, actually, and the HBC. And then in 2015, on the State and National Registers of Historic Places, which was uh, prompted by the Passaic County's Planning Department. Um, in 2020, we received a, um, a grant to run a conditions assessment, which outlined all the deficiencies uh, with the building, and prepared sort of um, recommendations um, on that and cost estimating. So with that report and moving forward with construction documents, uh, we were able to apply and receive a $2.25 million grant from the New Jersey Historic Trust. Um, this is the second largest grant by the state 
to uh, the county for preservation. Um, we were actually the first county to receive a $2.25 million grant. It's through their multi-phase program, which was a new program, um, and that was for Lambert Castle in 2019. Um, so we're very fortunate to be able to um, be awarded those projects. Um, so just in summary, this is for the exterior restora restoration, which will include all masonry repairs, um, repointing, fixing the balustrades, the cornice, uh, cleaning all of the biogrowth on the building. Um, we will be repairing the copper dome um, and the statuary at the top. Um, we will be looking at repair and replacement of all the metalwork details. Some have been lost, so those will come back. Um, and we'll be removing the stairs. If you're on the uh, Clark Street side, there's that sort of granite block that will be gone. So the original portico and entrance uh, will be brought back. And then there are some landscaping elements to connect from the Hamilton Street side to the Clark Street side. Um, and yeah. That's it. Any questions? It's exciting. It is exciting. It will be. Thank you. Uh, is that going to affect at all um, use of the building during the process? No. In the courtroom? No, and we are going to be working with yep. the judges we a, on... Yeah. Okay. We have a meeting, I think, on Monday with the assignment judge and the trial court administrator to go over the impact and how we're going to make sure that they can maintain court operations during construction. I know that the uh, Chief Justice is going to be visiting our judiciary later this month. I'm sure he'd love to hear about this. We've got any little write-up on it to share. So, okay. So that was the part we were going to hear after the public hearing roll call, but instead we're going to move into the public hearing roll call right now. <coughs> oh, and a, sorry, announcement and roll call. There, there was some. This is... All right. Um, th this public hearing is being held to solicit comments from the public regarding the County of Passaic Department of Cultural and Historic Affairs desire to establish pre-qualifications to bidders for the exterior restoration of the historic Passaic County Courthouse, whose address is 71 Hamilton Street in the county of Pathers in the, uh, the city of Patterson, New Jersey. The goal of this project are to clean, repair, and restore the entire exterior condition of the building, repair all existing metalwork, installation of the new roofing, reconstruction of stairs, and repair improvements to the copper dome. The scope of work consists of single prime contract uh, for general conditions, acquisition of all required permits, provisions of temporary facilities and controls, selective demolition and masonry and roof restoration according to the project manual plans and specifications. The public hearing is being held today, 12 noon of uh, February 2nd, in room in this room, 220, the Passaic County Administration Building. The following public hearing was noticed in the Herald News and the record on January 6, 2024. 16th. Uh, thank you. The roll call? County Commissioners Cruz, Here. Duffy, Gallo? Here. James? Lepore? Here. Deputy Director Lazaro? Here. Director Bartlett? Here. Can I have a motion to open the public hearing? Second. Okay. <clears throat> Cruz. County Commissioners Duffy, uh, Cruz? Yes. Duffy? Yes. Gallo? Yes. James? Yes. Lepore? Yes. Deputy Director Lazaro? Yes. Director Bartlett? Yes. Does anyone present desire to be heard on the application Kelly just described to us? All right. Second by Duffy. Uh, County Commissioners Cruz? Yes. Duffy? Yes. Gallo? Yes. James? Yes. Lepore? Yes. Deputy Director Lazaro? Yes. Director Bartlett? Yes. And I'll take a motion to adjourn the public hearing. Second. County Commissioners Cruz, yes. Duffy, yes. Gallo, yes. James, yes. Lapore, yes. Deputy Director Lazaro, yes. Director Bartlett, yes. All right. Matt, anything else on your agenda? That's all I have for Director t today, Director. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, and thanks to everybody who was part of that uh, from our staff.
Um, so that brings us to county commissioner reports. I, I said a lot of what I wanted to say earlier in the meeting, um, but for our employees and for law enforcement officers and for everyone here in uh, the county of Passaic, I just want to uh, remind you that if you need help, if you need to talk to someone, there are resources available. For any Passaic County employee, our employee assistance program can be reached at 1-800-663-0404. Uh, there's a cop to cop counseling service available for law enforcement officers at 1-866-267-2267. St. Joseph's Crisis Hotline can be reached at 973-754-2230. And of course, anywhere in the nation, 24-7, you can uh, call the, uh, the National Suicide and Crisis Hotline by dialing 988. Danny? Orlando? Uh, Commissioner Duffy, anything? No, nothing. Thank you. All right. Nick? Nothing. Thank you. Bruce? Uh, just, I just want to thank all of our department heads. Uh, we, we've had a rough beginning of this year. You guys have been a big help to everybody in, through a lot of this, so I really do appreciate everybody who helped, uh, everybody who respected the family, families that were dealing with this uh, and didn't make terrible comments. You guys have been there for all of us, and I really do appreciate it, and I will not forget it. Very good. Uh, with no communications, that brings us to letter K on the agenda, the oral portion. Can I have a motion to open the public portion of the meeting? I'll move it. County Commissioners Cruz, yes. Duffy, yes. Gallo, yes. James, yes. Lepore, yes. Deputy Director Lazara, yes. Director Bartlett. Yes. Uh, this is the part where members of the public can approach the podium. Uh, you will have three minutes. Please begin with your name and address uh, and take note that whatever you have to say will become part of the public record of today's meeting. Okay, you don't want to take a motion to close. Second. Uh, Seconded by Duffy. County Commissioners Cruz, yes. Duffy, yes. Gallo, yes. James, yes. Lepore, yes. Deputy Director uh, Lazara, yes. Director Bartlett. Yes. Uh, that brings us to letter L, a resolution requiring two-thirds vote. Lou, do you need to read the name of that into the record? No. Okay. Then I'll just call for a uh, uh, motion and a second on L1. County Commissioners Cruz, yes. Duffy, yes. Gallo, yes. James, yes. Lepore, yes. Deputy Director Lazara, yes. Director Bartlett. Yes. Uh, that brings us to letter M, the consent agenda. Council, any late starters or amendments? <clears throat> yes, Director. We do have one late starter. We'll just read it in the record. For the record, it's a resolution qualifying New Jersey Board of Public Utilities licensed third party electric and or natural gas suppliers to provide electricity and natural gas, natural gas supply services to participating members of the Passaic County Energy Regional Cooperative Pricing System for calendar year 2024 pursuant to NJSA 48 colon 11-5 uh, and RFQ-24-061. I'd ask that M73 be added to the consent agenda. Okay, I'll call for that motion in a second. Before I do that, uh, are there any items on the consent agenda that any commissioner wants pulled off and voted separately? Okay, seeing none, can I have a motion to add M73? Second. Second. County Commissioners Cruz? Yes. Duffy? Yes. Gallo? Yes. James? Yes. Lepore? Deputy Director Lazara? Yes. Director Bartlett? Yes. And can I have a motion to adopt the consent agenda M1 through M73? I'll move it. Second. County Commissioners Cruz? Yes. Duffy? Yes. Gallo? Yes. James? Yes. Four? Yes. Deputy Director Lazara? Yes. Director Bartlett? Yes. All right. That brings us to new. <coughs> Uh, and one, uh, I'm sorry, is there something else for this? We're good? Okay. Uh, and one. Okay. Uh, if uh, council. <coughs> oh, sorry. Um, the guarantee ordinance 
I'm sorry, Director. The guarantee ordinance incorrectly included the phrase veterans housing project in two locations, the title as well as the third line of the sixth whereas clause. The correct phrase should read senior housing project. Okay. With that change, uh, can I have, do we need to read anything into the record, Lou? Director, we are and receive the supplemental death statement from the CFO. Uh, and then I will read, um, I will read the first uh, guaranteed ordinance. 2024-01 uh, amended and reinstated guaranteed ordinance of the County of Passaic, New Jersey, securing the Passaic County Improvement Authority's County of Passaic Guaranteed Revenue Bonds Senior Housing Project Series 2024 in one, uh, in one or more series in an aggregate principal amount not to exceed uh, 20 million. County Commissioners Cruz, yes. Duffy, yes. Gallo, yes. James, yes. Lepore, yes. Deputy Director Lazara, yes. Director Bartlett. Yes, that brings us to Bond Ordinance 24-02. Bond Ordinance to authorize the undertaking of the Passaic County Courthouse Exterior Restoration Project in and by and for the Open Space Trust Fund of the County of Passaic State of New Jersey to appropriate the sum of Eleven million five hundred thousand to pay the cost thereof, to appropriate the state. Uh, um, I'm sorry, to appropriate appropriate a state grant to authorize the issuance of bonds to finance such appropriation and to provide for the issuance of bond anticipation notes in anticipation of the issuance of such bonds. Second. County Commissioners Cruz, yes. Duffy, yes. Gallo, yes. James, yes. Four, yes. Deputy Director Lazara, yes. Director Bartlett. Yes, that brings us to Bond Ordinance 2024-03. <clears throat> bond Ordinance to authorize the making of various public improvements in, by, and for the County of Passaic State of New Jersey to appropriate the sum of $10,500,000 to pay for the cost thereof to make make a down payment to authorize the issuance of bonds to the finance such appropriation and to provide for the issuance of such, I'm sorry, issuance of bond anticipation notes in anticipation of the issuance of such bonds. Second. County Commissioners Cruz. Yes. Duffy. Yes. Gallo. Yes. James. Yes. Lepore. Yes. Deputy yes. Director um, Lazara. Yes. Director Bartlett. Yes. Can I have a motion on the personnel? Move the personnel. Second. County Commissioners Cruz. Yes. Duffy. Yes. Gallo. Yes. James. Yes. Lepore. Yes. Deputy Director Lazara. Yes. Director Bartlett. Yes. Bills? Move the bills. Second. County Commissioners Cruz. Yes. Duffy. Yes. Gallo. Yes. James. Yes. Lepore. Yes. Deputy Director Lazara. Yes. Director Bartlett. Yes. Thank you very much, everyone. Please join us back here on Tuesday, the 13th of February uh, for a celebration of Black History Month and our next regular meeting. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Second. County Commissioners Cruz. Yes. Duffy. Yes. Gallo. Yes. James. Yes. Lepore. Yes. Deputy Director Lazara. Yes. Director Bartlett. Yes. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, thank you. All right. Have a good day. All right.